Today we're talking basement insulation, specifically under slab insulation, and why the best laid plans sometimes don't materialize. Let's take it away. Today I'm with Brett Morrow, the project manager at the Ceriza House, and we're talking about basement insulation. Now, in previous videos on Jake's house, we showed that we use polystyrene insulation as the insulation underneath that slab of that passive house. In this project, we had actually planned on using a different material, a material that's called cellular glass or foam glass. And there's multiple manufacturers of it, and unfortunately, those manufacturers are back east. And we looked at using that insulation as a replacement for the aggregate or the rock underneath this foundation slab. Now, the reason that we wanted to use this aggregate or this recycled glass that's melted and then a bunch of air is blown into it is that it does multiple things that make this job a lot more efficient. Now, the standard is to use polystyrene insulation, which is really good under slabs. You can get it of a different density so that it can support the weight of that house. The benefit of using this foam glass is that we can replace the rock that is under all these insulations that is crucial for drainage away from the foundation and it could serve two functions. And we love materials that can serve two functions. So it serves not only the ability to drain water away from the foundation, but it serves as an insulation. And so Brett, what happened when we tried to figure out if we could use foam glass here? Well, most of it's up in northeast United States, a long, long way from here. To get it here, the embodied carbon would build and build to where it would be more embodied carbon just than to use regular insulation. insulation. So originally, when we planned this project with the architects, we found out that there was going to be a uh, manufacturer of this insulation, the, the foam glass insulation in central California, which is about two and a half, three hours away from our house. So the embodied carbon of trucking it here would actually be really, really not very much. And the fact that because foam glass is mostly air, it's really light. And so we could actually have a 40 yard truck full of this rock that would have replaced all the aggregate that would have taken many, many truckloads from a local quarry because you can't, it's so heavy, you can't put it in big 40 yard uh, trucks. You have to put it in dump trucks. And so, you know, the, the fact that that plant never came online meant that we had to adapt really quickly. That's right. And so, you know, we came in and worked with the architect and worked with the, with the foundation guys to replace this polystyrene in that foundation. Now, we also had another option on this project, and that was to use volcanic stone or pumice. Mm -hmm. And so tell us why we didn't use the pumice underneath the slab here. Well, pumice is great. It's light. It's insulative but it doesn't have a consistency of being able to be compacted. So they couldn't guarantee it. The engineers can't say, okay, that will be good to use because it's, it depends on where it's from. And so it had different compressive strengths right. and the different compressive strengths mean that we may have had differential settling or when this house finally got built and a big earthquake came, it could have completely failed and, and collapsed. Sure. And so really it became a quality control issue. Now, we are using that pumice. Uh, so we've, we've decided to use this natural pumice. Uh, Arc and Tilt Architects, who are the architects for this project, are really into natural materials and low embodied carbon. And so using this pumice, this natural uh, stone uh, replacement uh, for backfill on this project, we didn't have those same problems, right? right? It has a lot of the same qualities as the gravel we were talking about earlier. It can drain water and it also is insulative but it can't handle a load on it. So you can use it as a backfill it, and, it, and put us, in this particular instance, we have to build up within two feet of the top of the grade and we, then we have to use regular mulch material. But up to that point, we can use a lot of this uh, pumice and it is good for us. And so the pumice is not gonna have the building sitting on top of it. So now we don't have to worry so much about the structural capabilities of the pumice and we can really just use it as its insulative and drainage capacity. Right. Okay, so if you're interested in learning more about natural products and how we try to use natural products to replace man-made high embodied carbon projects, products, please watch uh, this channel. Hit subscribe if you're interested in learning more about the Cereza Project or building science as we show you how to build a better way.